What's Gucci, everybody, and welcome to another AJ tutorial. And today I want to talk about big O notation. I should add the notation in there. But what big O notation is, is how efficiently something runs in its worst case. Now, if you want to get into real life programming, real life programming where you're developing or making data structures or doing things, big O notation is a big deal because a lot of computer programming is make sure things happen efficiently that you can easily do things for instance uh, you when you type on a computer you want the letters to be there instantly so you can check that you spelled something correctly or when you're on the internet you want to quickly be able to navigate to other things and so to do all these things such as run algorithms and do certain computations certain things must be done but the same thing can be accomplished at different efficiencies and it's up to the computer programmer to figure out the most efficient way for that algorithm and in this tutorial today I want to talk about the different kinds of efficiencies and what they and what they sort of mean to start off I want to outline the basic big O principles now, these mathematical terms will help the better you are with math, and as you get older, you'll definitely understand them more. But essentially, if you think of n as, let's say, a simple programming statement such as adding something or multiplying something or just doing one step of a program, and, and n is the number of statements that need to be execute, executed, these alg these perform these ma if n is the number of times number of statements that need to be executed there are certain scenarios where these statements may need to be executed a certain number of times such as if you are sorting or if they need to be repeated for various reasons and this is where we come up with these mathematical expressions for big o notation now here is the order of the big O notation starting from the top constant which is the most efficient and at the bottom factorial which is the least efficient we'll get into that at the end of the tutorial right now I would like to outline the big O of n hierarchy as it were starting at the top with constant one it, um, constant is the fastest way an algorithm can be executed it just means that the steps are performed the normal way, such as you just perform n statements that many times. So if you had the if you performed if you had to swap something, you would switch the first thing and then switch the second thing, and then it would be constant. Logarith logarithmic is a little bit more than constant. It is basically what I like to think of as splitting up the problem. Examples of a logar logarithmic efficiency or binary search where each time you're halving the problem until you solve it and another thing is linear the next one is linear and linear is let's say you have an array and if the array is bigger you have to sort through the array so depending on the size of the array is how many end statements it will take to sort it so I kind of like to think as linear as you can easily identify a linear structure as a single for loop which goes through a whole array or some sort and then log linear that could be a scenario where it is n, to n log n so you can see it is less efficient because you're using the multiplication principle for n log n and this can be used in a scenario such as one of my videos where I show merge cert where you break things apart and also search through, your, through the array if you've taken some algebra you know about quadratic and quadratic could be used let's say you have a for loop nested in a for loop that way you have to go inside that for loop and do that n times times the n number of times outside of the for loop so kind of think of that and cubic could kind of be a triple nested for loop just thinking that and I just put the quadratic and cubic there they're kind of the same thing but just know you can have n to the fourth, n to the fifth, it keeps going on. And then 
less efficient than those or bigger than those I should say is exponential which would be if you put the n in the exponential position so 2 to the n would be bigger than n cubed if they were if n were the same number and even less efficient than those is n factorial which quickly quickly can become an extremely big number and I'll try to illustrate that later and here we go with the next slide I just wanted to show that I here I showed you like again in n squared I have a double for loop nested in each other and then I just have one statement down below what this shows is that if I'm gonna write out the big O of n equation for this it's n squared plus one because I'm gonna execute this statement n squared times and then I'm gonna have one and so if somebody asked you what was the big O of n for this you would say n squared because you only care about the biggest coefficient in big O of n cases because well the biggest coefficient is going to matter most for the equation if you ever done algebra quadratic equations that the squared number will mean the most usually in the equation and to again illustrate why this is so important in computer science I'm going to show how as you go down the ladder how less efficient these things go so let's say that I am counting time here so each number represents a second which is kind of easy and I want to know how much it's going to take to complete 100 statements so n equals 100 and so I'm gonna put in a if I put in a constant algorithm it's just gonna take one second because no matter what it's constant if I put it in a logarithmic algorithm, it's going to take 6.64 seconds, which is not long. If I take n linear, it's going to take 100 seconds, because again, it's 100 elements. If it's n times log n, it's going to be 664, just both of these time multiplied together. If I do n, qua n squared, you can see it's getting pretty big. It just jumped up to 10,000. n cubed, 100,000, just to add another zero. But now look at this exponential. This exponential, it's a huge number. I believe, let's see, I just calculated it. The 2 to the n exponential is 1.27 times 10 to the 30th. So you can see how jumping from cubic to exponential was an insane increase and would take a huge amount of time, years, if that were just one second. That is a large amount of seconds. And then 100 factorial may take us more than our whole lives, more than everyone's lives together. So you definitely want to stay away from exponential and factorial functions and even quadratic and quadratic if you can hope um, stop it from happening, but sometimes you can't avoid it because as you if I made this number a thousand, these numbers would increase even more and it would be terrible. So if you're really trying to make if you're really trying to make things efficient, trying to make a nice data structure or linear, you want to stick to things that are constant, log, linear, or maybe log linear but as soon as you get qua to quadratic when you have a huge data set it will take an enormous amount of time to sort it on a very large scale so you wanna watch out for that if you have any questions feel free to email me or message me check out my website and please subscribe thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful wonderful day